Hello and welcome to WCPO Lounge Acts. I'm your host, Austin Fast, and joining us today in the WCPO Lounge, we have Adrian from Atlanta, Georgia. Howdy. Thank you so much for coming in today. We appreciate this. We're so glad that you're here with us today. We were just talking, it's National Bagel Day, it's National Pizza Day, it's Friday. It's a good day here in Cincinnati and at WCPO because we have Adrian with us. Um, she has a really just unique and unusual style of music, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Um, I, I just told her a little bit ago, um, I, the first time I heard one of her songs, I, I got goosebumps. You know, her, your, your voice is so clear and just the... Just you're going to see in, in just a second. So I'll stop talking and just Thank we'll you, get straight Austin. to that music. So first up, we have When I Leave You. This yeah. Uh, part of the fun of like my live shows is that I tell a lot of goofy stories. Um, usually I'm sipping a little red wine and getting a little too um, loose. But so I guess I'll I'll include a little bit of that. So this song is called When I Leave You. And that's um, it's the story sort of of a. Uh, the time when I met my ex-boyfriend's family over dinner for the first time and they're very wholesome and charming and I wanted very badly to be accepted by them but I'm thinking in my head the whole time what kind of evil stuff are they going to come up with to say about me after I break up with this boy because I feel like you know if you're a loving and supportive family that's what you have to do to support your boy. <laughs> so I was having that conversation in my head over this dinner. Um, and then I wrote this adorable song about that. So here it is. All right, well, I wish we would have had some red wine for you ready to go. I didn't I know. know. Right? <laughs> this is Adrian for WCPO Lounge. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you guys. Um, cool, so there's that one. Um, here's another one about um, awkward boy situations. Uh, in this in this particular event, I had a big old crush on somebody who already had, um, you know, a person that they were attached to at the time. And uh, I have a strong sense of personal ethics, so I was not going to mess that up for them. But nevertheless, I still had to express my feelings um, verbally, which I did. And uh, this song is about that specific conversation. It's like the chorus is like verbatim what I said to this person. It's called Low Key. <laughs>
We've been listening to Adrian. That was low key. And before that, we heard uh, When I Leave You. So Mm -hmm. as we said earlier, thank you so much. (laughs) I mean, thank you so much for coming in. She um, performed last night at the Listing Loon here in uh, Cincinnati's Northside neighborhood. Um, And as you just saw, you know, she has a, a really... I'd say hypnotic voice, unusual style, um, something that I, I wasn't really familiar with before I started digging in your, into your music. Um, you know, you, it's described as it has a lot of Brazilian influences for from sure. Samba, yes. Bossa Nova, and then something new to totally new to me that I never heard, you know, I've heard of the other ones, but mm-hmm. I've never heard of, um, Tropicalia before. Yeah. Those guys are a huge deal to me. Um, yeah, I think my guitar playing style is kind of a mishmash of a lot of different attitudes and one of the main kind of influences that I have as far as guitar is Luis Bonfa who's pretty much a straight up Boston Nova Samba guy from back in the day but then of course um, later like late 60s in Brazil you had people like Caetano Veloso who's my like he's like my god um, uh, yeah uh, Caetano Veloso Gilberto Gil and then there's another guy later who's not technically Tropicalia, but his name is Marcos Valley, and that's like, if I could, if I could just sound exactly like Marcos Valley, but with a girl voice, I think I would be <laughs> perfectly happy. <laughs> I would feel like a success. What was it? What is it about these types of voices and these sounds that drew you in? Um, sp- partly it's the songwriting. Um, the chord vocabulary is extremely rich and extremely expressive and then there's a, just so much play and humor and flexibility in that music and so much personality and Caetano Veloso's voice is just like delicious and like sounds like buttered toast <laughs> and like and his guitar work is is beautiful and uncreative and um I'm yeah like regularly rip off um not actual chord progressions, but like rhythms and stuff I will rip off from him all the time. Um, can, yeah. you, can you tell me, tell us a little bit about um, kind of the background of Tropicalia? I mean, you said it was, you told me earlier it was in the late 60s, um, but what did the movement represent? <laughs> so a lot of people have been, are still trying to figure out what exactly they represented. I'm no historian, so I, please don't consider me like your primary source on this, <laughs> but um, it was a time of extreme political unrest at the time, and artists were very heavily suppressed, and especially artists that weren't following the the patterns of like traditional like sort of nationalistic um bossa nova music and stuff that had come before so there was a group of musicians that were most notably was including like Caetano Veloso, Gilberto Gil, Osmo uh like Tom Zay and a handful of others that were like extremely um recklessly breaking that mold and they were into psychedelic music and into like Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles and that influence was all over the place but they were also just like charting new territory like totally outer space type sounds um Sergio Diaz from most contentious used to build his own like guitars and and sound effects um that were just totally out of this world and then the lyrics are almost like dadaist like collage just free association but with obvious like political power and energy um and it was just like reckless rock raucous beautiful like joyful whimsical music um but and still with a lot of just like the lyricality and just straight up beauty of bossa nova and more traditional brazilian stuff like that right and um you just mentioned um i'm gonna butcher it but mm-hmm. os, os mu- yeah os mu- there we mm-hmm. go that one <laughs> um so they were one of the uh from what i saw or what we were just talking about one of the first bands that you found i, I think i saw a story something about you you dug up by accident a record or, yeah. from them in that a record was, store yeah that was the gateway drug for me when i was like 14 <laughs> i found them randomly in a cd store so you found them they were kind of your heroes and then just recently a couple years ago you tell us about um your encounter with them okay so it's going to sound too good to be true, but it really happened. Uh, I opened for them in Atlanta, or the, this sort of um, reunited version of, like, Sergio Diaz and um, the original drummer and a couple other people. Um, and I opened for them in Atlanta because uh, they happened to be playing at the venue that I know everybody at, so I just asked. And then at that show, um, Sergio Diaz 
watched my set. Reportedly, he cried during my set in the sound booth while talking to the sound guy, Jonathan. And um, then during their set, they brought me up on stage during the encore of Penny Circensis to sing it with them. And I was crying. <laughs> it's the most beautiful, um, explosive, joyful thing that probably had ever happened to me at that point. And then after that, Sergio calls me like a couple months later and wants me to join the band and be in their band singing all the like Rita Lee parts from the, the original songs and go on tour and I was supposed to like get my visa together go to Brazil and rehearse and I was just like beside myself with joy but that never manifested because um, their tour just sort of fell apart due to difficult circumstances beyond my awareness or control. Yeah, sometimes that happens, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, do you think there'll be a chance in the future? I mean, are you still in contact uh, with them? I haven't spoken to Sergio in a little while. Um, what the, the bittersweet ending is that he actually asked me if I would be down to start a new project with him and tour the U.S., and I said no, and it was heartbreaking. Yeah. But I said no because it was like, well... I'm, I'm, I have my own thing that I passionately need to do, and okay. I'm, I will be playing kind of all these same venues, so I don't feel like I can start over with a different, separate project. Wow! Even though that alliance would obviously be so powerful, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I can't imagine saying no to one of my heroes. No, like, no. <laughs> turning, sorry, actually, yeah. I'm good. But yeah. you know that the way you describe it makes a lot of sense. You know, you're, yeah. you're working on your own thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, Let's talk a little bit about, you know, is, are these the whistles and all these, the multiple languages, are those part of Tropicale or are those uh, um, your additions and your interpretations? Well, so Tropicalistas would mostly sing in Portuguese and Spanish and occasionally English. I sing mostly in English and occasionally Portuguese and occasionally French. And Caetano Veloso will do a lot of whistling stuff. So will Gilberto Gil. They, they're both beautiful whistlers. I think whistling is more common in in a lot of Brazilian song. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. They're just more fun. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know why we don't have more whistling in American music. Yeah, like really thoughtful, <laughs> virtuosic whistling no, needs to be a thing. But seriously, some people, like I'm lucky to even get like, you know, a little squeak of a whistle out yeah. and you have, you sound like, you know, a robin singing Thank or you. whatever, whatever those birds in the morning are. Um, now, well, uh, since I have the platform to do so, I would like to offer to um, the the uh, indie alt um, singer songwriter Andrew Bird. I would like to challenge him to a fight. Um, I would like to whistle fight Andrew Bird, please. So if he's anywhere out there listening, um, we might have to tag him later on and mm -hmm. see if this will actually manifest. Yeah, that'd be. Do fun. you know him personally? Nope. Okay. Well. <laughs> You will see Everybody him, brings hopefully. his name up to me when I do a show, and they're like, oh, my God, I'm here at Andrew Bird. You guys just like... Have a whistle off on Facebook? You guys Facebook are or? like the same, and I'm like, I could take him. <laughs> <laughs> and the whistle off of the ages. Uh -huh. All right, well, it's coming up soon, I hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it is it hard for you to sing in foreign languages? Like, do you speak Portuguese or French in your everyday life? Uh, it's easier for me to sing it than speak it probably because it's slower um well like are you i mean if you met a french person or if i met a french person i could stumble through a conversation okay. but not gracefully okay uh, about the same in portuguese but i'm a, actually a little bit more fluent in french mm -hmm. um but both of them as instruments are just gorgeous and sometimes a song begs to be in one language or another because it's just a different instrument you just to kind, me, like just sonically, just kind of the feel of the song. Yeah. How do you how do you determine that? Uh, I, it's not really a determination that I think about very much. It just sort of seems like, oh, this one wants this. It just do you do you write songs in Portuguese mm -hmm. and oh, you do okay. Yeah. That's why I wanted to <laughs> check. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you only. Yeah, not too often. I'm trying actually not to do it too much because I think I'm I'm into a thing that right now where I'm finding ways to write true stories in English that are more communicative, I think. And I'm, I'm into that right now, just trying to really um, tell stories that people feel. And I don't, yeah, and I'm, since I'm playing to, you know, English-speaking audiences, I want to connect with them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. since we're talking about your um, music you were working on right now, um, you have another album coming out pretty soon, you told me. Yeah, this one has been years in the works. 
So your first album was uh, Organismo, or maybe not your first, but uh, your first LP. Yeah, my most recent album. My first LP I put out when I was 19, and let's not talk about it because <laughs> I'm better now. But <laughs> So then there was Organismo, which came out in 2012. And then, uh, so this one is, you know, five years later, uh, six, oh God, six years later. It's called Water Music. And it's been done for a while, but it's like, I'm not going to beat around the bush it's just been a brutal experience trying to get it out and just like a lot of a lot of back and forth with like various labels investors opportunities and a lot of just like broken promises and disillusionment and I wish that I could go back in time and tell myself to just put it out and not wait for anything to happen um because I think that's how the music industry is going to work now artists need to just do stuff um so, so yeah. but yeah, so it's, I think it's finally coming out. I, I don't want to say too much because the paperwork isn't signed yet, but, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully working with a dear friend of mine to get it out in spring. Okay. And, yeah. So coming up Fingers soon. crossed. Yeah. Also this spring, um, you're going to South by Southwest, yes. right? Yeah. This for the first time. Awesome. That's what I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. So when you found that out, you know, what was your reaction? Oh, I'm excited, but I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I hear about it sounds like. You know, if you're if you get at all claustrophobic in crowds, you're gonna be probably not the place <laughs> you're for you. Gonna be in trouble. But uh, I'm yeah, I'm gonna dive in and and see what I can get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know too much yet about what my performances are gonna be like and where and stuff. But uh, I know it's gonna be like a whirlwind and very very crazy and educational and. For sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've never been there personally, but just, you know, from watching videos and stuff, that's how it seems mm -hmm. to be. So yeah. I wish you luck there. Thank and you. I hope you have a great time. Thanks. Um, so besides your, your music that you do, I am aware that you're also a visual artist. Sort of. Uh, I have been in the past. I'm not, I'm not much doing that right now. I actually, oh, no. like, kind of threw out or gave away a lot of my, like, paint stuff and art stuff, and it felt really good because I actually realized one day I hate painting. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it felt really what? good to just like what led eject to that it from my life. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just thought about it for a second. I was like, like wait a minute. I'm done with this. <laughs> this sucks. I'm done with this. Well, no, I'm um, asking cause I saw, um, you did the, all the album art for organism. Yeah. Which... And that was, that was more like sculpture beadwork stuff. Um, if you see it online, it's like tiny little beads in a pattern. That's very similar to like a Mexican Guatemalan style of beadwork mm -hmm. that I just like saw, uh, when I was in Mexico and, freaked out because it's very pretty and I was like I could do that and I love like minute obsessive little pattern tasks yeah, like that. Yeah how long, how long did that because you made a mask. Yeah I made a mask a, a and, and a heart and then like a disc as well. Okay I didn't see the oh, disc. That was like behind it's like behind the actual CD part. Oh it's okay. Like you take that off and it's like oh pretty. So how long did it take you to put all that together because it remember. looks <laughs> like, like it took years. No it just took maybe a couple months. Only a couple months to put together some beads. Yeah, something like that. So you don't do that anymore? Uh, I haven't you? in a while. I don't know. I don't care that much about my own visual art. I care very much about other people's visual art. But m m for me, it's sort of more arts and crafts than it is like a artistic pursuit. I don't feel like I have that much to say visually. Mm -hmm. uh, I think... I should probably stay focused on what um, I feel like I have something to say doing, you know? Through your music. Mm -hmm. um, going, playing off of that, uh, personally, I think you have a pretty, like a really, as I said, unusual and interesting style. Um, and I'm sure some other people have that same reaction. Have you had um, some interesting reactions or is there anyone in particular um, that sticks out to you of a listener who, you know, how they reacted to your music? People don't always like know how to describe what I'm doing because it's kind of it's touching on a lot of reference points that are kind of all over the map um this girl last night said that my music to her sounds like you're chilling in your like bedroom or studio and it's like morning and the sun is coming through to where you can see like the little particulate dust in the sun rays and there's a hanging plant 
she said that's what my music feels like and I'm like cool okay <laughs> yeah. So, yeah um then there's this other time this is just like pure ego stroking right now but um when I got I had an insane opportunity to open for Donald Fagan from Steely Dan right. and uh in Nashville when I just done like a, a solo set the vibe of which was like exactly the same as this except in a concert hall with chandeliers but i'm you know just some lights not quite yeah, chandeliers but i'm just like that for yeah, next time i'm just like being my goofball self and whatnot and uh and i do my thing and then at the merch table people like multiple people came up to me and said that donald fagan should have been opening for me no. <laughs> and i'm like so i can't believe i'm repeating that because it's just like the it's an insane thing to say, but, but um, a huge compliment. But to you. hear that, I was just, I was crying. I it, was, bet. it was insane. Well, good for you. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And we have a, a little bit more time for a couple more songs from you. Okay. So let's get back to that. Um, this is Adrian in the WCPO Lounge, and I, you're going to play Ways next, right? Yes. This is a really new one. Um, I'm just going to play it. That song, I think, is called Ways, although I might change it. And then uh, this is, this is going to be my last one. And um, I did not write this song, but I think I'm allowed to do it because it's in the public domain. Um, and um, my listeners out in the world might recognize it. 
my dad really likes this one.
It's Adrian here in the WCPO Digital Lounge with an incredible performance of Ave Maria. And before that, we heard Waze, one of her originals. You yes. didn't write Ave Maria, I don't think. I don't think so. No, some, some other guy did. <laughs> <laughs> One or two of them. Yeah. Anyways, if you missed Adrian last night, uh, she was at the Listing Loon in Northside. So we're so glad that you stuck around Cincinnati for a night and joined us today. You're on your way down to Chattanooga. That's right. That's probably right after this. You got a mm-hmm. got a ways to go. Um, but for anyone who's watching, if they want to um, find more of your music, how can they do that? Uh, there is Adrian Music at adrian.bandcamp.com. Um, you can go on YouTube slash Adrian Music. You can go on Spotify iTunes, pretty much all those big obvious ones you can, I think you can find a couple albums on. Mm-hmm. Awesome. There you go. So A-D-R-O-N, Adrian, yes. look her up. You yep. can find more of her music if you like what you saw today. And if you like um, to see other great performances from stellar artists who come through Cincinnati and visit us here at WCPO, look for WCPO Lounge Acts. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, all those places. So thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Austin Fast, and we hope to see you next time.